Hi everyone, my name is Elliot Brooks and I will be talking to you today about HTTPS, which is the technology that ensures that your information stays secure on the web. Before talking about HTTPS though, I want to give you a quick refresher on what HTTP is. HTTP is the request, requ request response protocol underlying communication between clients and servers on the internet. So as you can see from our diagram here, the Basset Hound is um, the Basset Hound is our client, and then the server is our computer. So let's say that the server is Facebook. The Basset Hound would make a request to Facebook and say, hey, Facebook, I'd like to get all my profile photos. And then Facebook would respond and say, here, Basset Hound, here's all your profile photos. HTTPS, or HTTP is great, except when you have a man in the middle. So right now we see our boxer. The boxer is a man in the middle, and the man in the middle can perform man in the middle attacks, which is basically where the boxer will intercept all communication between the server and client, and it can steal that information. So say that our Basset Hound here is trying to place an order on Amazon. Um, he would then send his credit card information to the server, and the man in the middle would be able to steal that information, which isn't good. And this is why we need HTTPS. So HTTPS is just like normal HTTP, HTTP, but with the request and responses sent over a secure sockets layer, which encrypts and decrypts their contents. So now we have our diagram again. The client and the server are still exchanging HTTP messages, but these messages are encrypted. So what you see, the red squiggles are actually the secure sockets layer that has encrypted the request and responses. Now, even if the boxer is intercepting these requests and responses, it just looks like gibberish to him. He actually isn't able to read what this, the messages say. There he is. He's very confused. <laughs> so what does HTTPS do? Essentially, it does two things. The first thing is that it verifies that you're talking to the server you think you are talking to, and it ensures that only you can read what, um, what the server sends you, and only the server can read what you send it. I want to impress upon you that this is actually a really hard problem to solve, and it's very, we're like very grateful that there are these people in the 70s who solved it for us, because we can have the internet exist as it does. Because basically the problem is, if you can have a third party who's intercepting all your communication, how can you A, confirm the other parties, or in this case the server's identity, and B, exchange a secret key that only you and the server know that can be used to encrypt and decrypt all your communication? So that is what I will be talking about for the rest of this presentation. So how do you even ensure a secure connection? In security circles, we call this um, ensuring of a secure connection the handshake. The handshake has three steps, and the first step is what we're going to call algorithm agreement. It's when the client and server decide on two encryption algorithms that will be used for communication. So the first algorithm is one that will be used to encrypt the secret key. And then the second algorithm will be the one that will be used to encrypt all subsequent communication. And they will use the secret key that they have encrypted to then encrypt all subsequent communication. We're going to be talking about these algorithms today or later today. I don't want you to forget them. So just try to remember that these are the shared algorithms that were decided upon between the client and server at their first point of contact. The next step in the handshake is called the certificate exchange step. It's when the server si sends over its SSL certificate to prove its identity to the client. You're probably wondering, what's an SSL certificate? It's a very simple idea. Basically, an SSL certificate is just an identification card for a website. And it says, this website is who it says it is. Um, in detail, it's actually a text file, and it has a digital a signature that has been, been created by a certificate authority. You're probably now wondering, what is a certificate authority? Mm -hmm. A certificate authority is just one of several very trustworthy companies online. So that could be GoDaddy, Symantec, Komodo. And they issue uh, SSL certificates for other websites. 
So this, the SSL certificate has some very important information on it, including the name of the owner of the server, the domain that that server is associated with, the dates that the server that the certificate is valid, the digital signature by its certificate authority, and the server's public key. Um, these last two points, the digital signature by its certificate authority and the server's public key are a bit complicated. So we're going to take a brief interlude to talk about private and public keys. Then we'll get back to it and you'll understand what they are. Um, so private and public keys are very essential to understanding out, um, encryption in general. Basically, every website has its own, that you, every website that uses HTTPS has its own public key. And a public key is just a really big number. It's usually two really big prime numbers multiplied together. The idea is that only that website knows what two big prime numbers were used to, multi to like make its public key. And it's very hard. If the number is big enough, it's very hard to figure out what those two prime numbers were. So the public key is essentially a number that the um, website gives to anyone and says, hey, if you're going to send a message to me, use this key to encrypt your message to me. And then this is where the private key comes along. Because only the server knows what two numbers were used to generate that big public key, only the server is then able to decrypt that message and read what, um, what whoever had sent it, what, what the message actually is. So anyone can send an encrypted message to the server. Only the server is able to decrypt that message. OK, so to understand HTTPS, you have to know that certificate authorities also have public and private keys. So we're going to talk about the digital signature by the certificate authority, which is on the SSL certificate saying like, hey, this is a valid website. Um, that signature is actually made by the uh, certificate authority by taking the content of the certificate, encrypting it with the certificate authority's private key, and then attaching that to the end of the certificate. Now anyone can take the certificate authority's public key, decrypt the message, and check that the content of the um, certificate matches the content of the signature. If the two match, it means that this is a valid certificate that's made by a certificate authority. So you know the server is good. The final part of, um, sorry, that was the explanation of that. The final part of um, this SSL certificate is the server's public key. So now that we understand how public, private, and public keys work, we understand what the public key is. It's basically a very large number. And the server says, if you're going to send anything to me, encrypt it with this public key, and I'll be able to decrypt it. Um, so this leads us to the last part of our handshake, which is the key exchange. The client is going to generate a secret key, which will be used to encrypt and decrypt all subsequent communication between the client and server. The client then encrypts that secret key with the first of the shared algorithms. I told you to remember share, shared algorithms. The first one is the algorithm that's going to be used to encrypt um, the, the secret key. So it encrypts it with, the sec with the, one of the shared algorithms and also with the server's own public key. Now, even if someone was listening in and knows what two shared algorithms the client and server are going to use, that person is not going to be able to decrypt the message because they're not going to have access to the server's private key, which is the one missing piece that's needed to actually decrypt this message. OK, so the client sends the secret key to the server, which then is able to decrypt it using the shared algorithm that they agreed upon and its private key. OK, and that's basically how they ensure secure communication. Now the client and server can continue to communicate by encrypting everything with the second of the shared algorithms that they decide upon and with the, the secret key that they agreed upon and that um, the client was able to send over to the server. Which leads us back to this diagram. Now hopefully you understand what's going on. The client and the server are sending requests and responses to each other. Those requests and responses are being encrypted with SSL. That's the red squiggly. Now you know that SSL is essentially just the shared algorithm they decided upon and also the secret key that they decided upon. And then this boxer dog right up here is not able to know what they're saying. So that's it. That's all that HTTPS is for the most part. Um, <laughs> here's some resources that I used if you would like to learn a bit more about it. Thanks.